The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine, and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's see what's been happening to Gildersleeve. Well, it's plenty. Into the quiet town of Summerfield via the U.S. mail, a bomb has dropped. Everyone who is anyone in Summerfield has received this morning a creamy white envelope, roughly four by six, with a postmark of Savannah, Georgia. No bargain offer this. Eagerly, we pry open the flap, taking care not to cut our fingers, so fine and crisp the stationery. Inside, a second envelope, with our name inscribed upon it, nothing else. We pause a moment to admire the penmanship and dive inside again. Ah, a wisp of tissue paper flutters to the floor. We rub our thumb across the engraving. Our eyes focus, and behold. Mr. and Mrs. Tupper Hathaway request the honor of your presence at the marriage of their niece, Leela Barrington Ransom, to Dr. Julian Henry Culpepper. On October 9th, 1946, at half after four, Church of the Rebellion, Savannah, Georgia. Yes, the whole town's talking about it. Long before breakfast, the neighbor's cook, Lily B., came hot-footing it across the street and around to the kitchen door with the news. So, though the invitation lies unopened beside Gildersleeve's plate at breakfast, Birdie knows full well what's in it, and she's briefed the children accordingly. Now, remember what I told you, Leroy. Be nice to him. I always am. Well, a little nicer than that. You've got to realize, Leroy, this is liable to be kind of hard on your uncle, Mrs. Ransom, getting married like that. Why? She isn't marrying him. Well, Leroy, have you no feeling? Sure. On second thought, I think I'll just shove the invitation out of sight here under his butter plate. Shh, here he comes. Now, just act like nothing happened. Remember now, like nothing happened. Ah, good morning. Oh, good morning, good morning, good morning. I said good morning. Morning, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'll go get your breakfast right away. Huh. Marjorie? Oh, good morning, Anki. Leroy, no word of greeting for your uncle? Uh, hi. Yeah, well... What are you two staring at? Uh, Leroy, will you pass the sugar? Uh, sugar? Yeah, sure. Uh, there you are, Marge. Sugar. <laughs> Excuse me for not passing it before. I didn't notice you didn't have it. Oh, that's all right. Uh, some salt? You got salt there? Yes, yes, I've had the salt things. I just wanted the sugar for my cocoa. Uh, marmalade. You want some marmalade? Oh, I have some. I have plenty. Oh, but thank you just the same. Well, that's all right. Anything you want, just ask for it. Extraordinary. No mail come this morning? Daddy, you want the salt, you say, Marge? She just had the salt. What's going on here? Bertie, did no mail come this morning? What'd you say? I asked if there wasn't any mail this morning. No, sir, that is hardly any. Just the one thing there. What thing? Whatever it is. Well, where? Where is it? Under the butter plate. Under the, the fine plate. I better run out of the kitchen and see if anything's burning. What's the matter with her? Hmm. Savannah, Georgia. I'll have the sugar now, Leroy, if you feel you can spare it. Aren't you going to open it? Leroy. Later. Just a wedding invitation for Mrs. Ransom. How about that sugar? <laughs> What's the matter with you? Boy, is Bertie full of baloney. <laughs> well, well, when did you find out, Anki? Find out what? About Mrs. Ransom. Getting married? 
Oh, I've known about that for a long time. She told me last night. She said she wanted me to be the first to know. And you don't mind? No. That was all over years ago. Leela's is a fine girl. I wish her every happiness. But as far as I'm concerned, Bertie, what's keeping you out there? Uh, Mr. Gillsleeve, did you... Uh, Uncle Mort's ready, Bertie. You can take his place. Oh, and incidentally, he knows all about everything, so you don't need to worry. Yeah, don't worry about me. Mr. Gillsleeve, it ain't none of my business, of course, but I just want you to know I... I... Well, I just want you to know that's all. See, I made you some nice milk toast this morning. Milk toast? What for? Well, I knew you wouldn't probably be feeling so good, and there ain't nothing sits easy on the stomach in time of trouble than milk toast. I can't stand milk toast, Bertie. What do I want with milk toast anyway? I feel fine. The I... doorbell. I'll go. Let Bertie. I'll get it. Yes, yes. Oh, good morning, Judge. Come in. I won't stay but a very few minutes, Bertie. Mr. Gildersleeve, I won't stay but a few minutes. He's right in the dining room there. Well, hello, Judge. Guilty old man. Yeah. What are we shaking hands for? Oh, good morning, Judge. Hi. Marjorie, Leroy, I wonder if I could have a word with your uncle in private. Just for a moment. Certainly. we got to go to school anyway. Come on, Marge. What's up, Judge? Guilty old man, anything I can do, anything at all. You know that old man. Just call on me. Call on you for what? Anything. Are you planning to go to the office today? Certainly. Good. Work is the best medicine, they say. I'd offer to drive you down, but I, I think the walk would do you good. Yeah. The important thing is not to let this prey on your mind. I know how you feel, old man. I, I don't want you to think that I... I'd... feel fine. That's the stuff. Try to keep that up. It's the only way to hold on to yourself. Chin up. Never admit for a minute even to yourself... Listen, you've got me all wrong, Horace. I feel fine. Bully for you. Keep telling yourself that. Oh, listen, you old goat. I feel fine. You understand? I feel fine. I'm fine. Uh, hello, Peavy. Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I, I didn't think we'd be seeing you today. I don't know why not. I'm in here all the time. Yeah, I guess I might as well take some cigars as long as I'm here. Peavy, I'd like some cigars. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, uh, well, there are some things that are very hard for a man to say, but we'd like you to know, Mrs. Peavy and I, that, that, we, well, that we, we'd like you to come to dinner. Well, that's very nice. I'd be delighted to come. I'm an older man than you are, Mr. Gildersleeve, and I, I've had my share of disappointments, too. I, I'd just like to say that I, I know how you feel. What's the matter with everybody? I feel fine. You hear that, Peavy? I feel fine. <laughs> Good morning, Bessie. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? Oh, I don't know what to say, but... Don't say it. Bessie? Yes, sir? What are these? What, sir? On my desk here. They're roses. Get them out of here. Uh, I'm sorry, Bessie, but I can't stand all this sympathy. Ye gods, a man has no private life of his own in this town. You try to wind up something quietly, and the next morning everybody's looking at you. Everybody butting in and telling you they know how you feel. Don't you try to tell me how I feel. I feel fine. I'm very happy about the whole thing. Yes, sir. Good. Uh, somebody came in. See who it is. You who? Anybody here? Leela, now what the... Oh, good morning, Bessie. Is Mr. Gildersleeve in? Uh, just a minute. I'll ask him. Oh, well, don't bother. He'll see me. Rock Martin, you poor darling. <laughs> how are you? Fine and dandy, Leela. Never better. Oh, I'm glad to see you taking it this way. I knew you would. You have so much character. <laughs> I'm afraid I've come to ask a favor of you, Throckmorton. Oh, that's terrible. A favor at nine o'clock in the morning? Oh, 
gracious, I've been up for hours. I'm trying to get everything packed for when I go home for the wedding. And do you know something awful? I can't get half my things into my trunks. Maybe you'd better just give up the whole idea. Oh, silly. I, I wondered if you'd mind too terribly much just expressing a few things for me. No, of course not. The only thing is I haven't anything to pack them in. I, you'd have to get some crates or something. But you wouldn't mind? No. Oh, it would only take you a couple of evenings, probably. I'll give you a key in case I'm not there myself. All right. Uh, a couple of evenings? Well, there's quite a lot of it. I think it's terribly generous of you to offer to do it, Throckmorton. And I can't tell you how grateful I am. I know Julian Henry will be grateful, too. Julian Henry. <laughs> you know, I think you're just a little bit jealous of Julian Henry. I wish you every happiness, Leela. Oh, come on now. Fesh up. Aren't you just a little teensy bit jealous? Nope. Will you miss me just a little when I'm gone? I have a very busy winter ahead, Leela. I have lots of plans. Lots of plans. You poor darling. <laughs> well, I've got to go shopping to do hairdress a million things. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. What? Uh, hand me my handbag over there, will you? Uh, uh, I was cleaning out some old trash this morning, and I came across these. What? Well, don't tell me you don't recognize your own handwriting. They're your letters, silly. Love letters. You've kept them all these years? What for? Oh, because they were so sweet. But I thought it was only fair to let you have them back now that they don't mean anything anymore. Besides, I wouldn't want Julian Henry finding them, would I? Wait, uh, don't you want the ribbon? I'll leave you that to remember me by. Love letters. What a fool I was. Well, I know what to do with them. Oop, wait a minute. Maybe I ought to burn those if I remember it correctly. I wouldn't want Bessie. Not that she would. Hmm. Uh, smell nice. Sachet, I guess. She must have had them among her things. <laughs> Gosh, that was four years ago. Let's see. My dear, darling, beloved Leela. I didn't sleep a wink all last night. All night long, I lay awake thinking of you. Once I got up and went to my open window, where the moon was shining in. And as I stood there, gazing up at it, I thought to myself, that same moon is shining down upon my darling Leela, clear across the vacant lot there. I looked across, and I could see your house and your own dear bedroom window. It was open a little, it made me wish that I were a little moonbeam and could steal in and nestle softly on the pillow beside your cheek. Oh, Leela, I love you so. I think if the day ever comes when we're no longer... When we're no longer... Confound it! When I got up this morning, I felt perfectly all right. <laughs> Can Gildersleeve bear up? We'll find out in a few moments. Mr. Lang, if it isn't one thing, it's another. Now that more wheat flour is available for baking my favorite rolls and muffins, it seems harder than ever to find a really good spread to serve with them. Well, of course, all spreads for bread are very scarce right now. Yes, but the one I mean is parquet margarine. It's been my family's favorite for years. In fact, that's one reason my rolls and muffins taste so good. Parquet adds such delicious flavor. But as I was saying, just try to find parquet in the food stores when you want it. I know just what you mean. But here's the picture. Try as we may at Kraft, we just can't seem to catch up with the demand for parquet margarine. We're continuing to make as much parquet as available supplies permit. And we're rushing it to your food dealer, flavor fresh and country sweet. 
always of the same high quality that has made parquet a favorite spread of millions. So be sure to look first for parquet when you shop. Your dealer will have it for you from time to time, so ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y, parquet margarine, made by Kraft. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, who is now thoroughly convinced his heart is broken. What to do? He finally decides he'll put on a brave face and seek the consolation of masculine companionship at the Jolly Boys Club. Let's peep into the club now where, though Gildersleeve has not arrived, he is the subject of conversation. Poor old Gildersleeve. He's been fooling around with that woman for a long time. Four or five years at least. Think of all the dough he must have spent on her. Floyd, must you be crass? Crass? What the heck is that? <laughs> well, figure it out for yourself. A picture show here, a meal there, mounts up in a few years. Where does it get him? First guy that comes along with a half a carat diamond, Gildersleeve gets the pink slip. Well, it doesn't seem right. How's he taking it? Anybody seen him? Well, I ain't I... seen him, but I'll give eight to five. Gildersleeve ain't losing any sleep over it. He'll have to make some new arrangements, that's all. I happen to disagree with you, Floyd. I think he's taking this thing pretty hard. Have you seen him, Peavy? Yes, I, I saw him. <laughs> well, what did you think? I, I don't think he likes it. In my opinion, it's a real blow to him. A real blow. Poor old Gildersleeve. Well... That's the way it goes sometimes. Yes, sir. That's the way it goes. Yes, sir. Well, for crying out loud, we don't have to act like a funeral. Let's get a card game going here or something. Come on, Peavy. Well, I might play for a few minutes just to see how the cards are running. Last time you said that, you took away six bucks and a half. Hey, I think I hear somebody coming. Sounds like Gildersleeve. I never thought he'd feel up to this. Let's be real nice to him. A fellow jolly boy that's had a tough break. Yeah. Well, well, jolly boys. Uh, Chief Gates, as I live and breathe. Uh, did you catch a lot of crooks today? <laughs> How are you, Commissioner? And Judge Hooker, the old spirit of Hevius Corpus. Hi, Gilly. And Floyd, the tonsorial artist. <laughs> and Peavy, the merry pharmacist. Greetings, one and all. Hi, Commissioner. You seem to be in good spirits, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, why shouldn't I be? That's what I told them, Commissioner. I Shut he... up, Floyd. Why? What's the matter? Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, the boys were telling me you were down in the mouth about your girlfriend dumping you. I don't care for the way you put it. <laughs> oh, I'm... You know, I mean about Mrs. Ransom getting married. Anyway, I stuck up for you. I said you'd roll with the punch and come up smiling. That's right, Floyd. That's me. Often a bridesmaid, but never a bride. But I can take it. <laughs> what do I care? That's a spirit. No, sir. Leela is a fine girl. I wish her every happiness. I think you're being very generous, Gildy. Yes, I guess I am. Fellas, I have a suggestion. Listen, we all know Mrs. Ransom. She's been on a lot of outings at the Jolly Boys Club. Yeah, what about it? I was thinking it'd be a real nice gesture if the club would all chip in and buy her a wedding present. That is, if Mr. Gildersleeve has no objection. Oh, no. A nice gesture, Chief, as you say. Then I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. I second it. What do you say, Peavy? Don't you agree this is a proper and friendly gesture for the Jolly Boys to make? Uh, what kind of a present would it be? <laughs> We can think about that later. Are you in favor of the idea? Well, I wouldn't say I'm against it. Oh, you make me tired. Now, Judge, let's not be impatient with friend Peavy. He just don't want to buy a pig in a poke, that's all. Uh, the way I look at it, Peavy, we should get her something substantial and at the same time reasonably priced. Yeah, what did you have in mind? Well... Say we was all to put in two dollars a piece. That's ten dollars. Get her a, well, let's see. Piece of tapestry makes a nice gift. Yeah, a piece of tapestry to hang on the wall. Then every time she looked at it, she'd think of the Jolly Boys back in Summerfield. What will her husband think when he looks at it? 
Oh, quit worrying, Peavy. Are you with us or not? Well, I'll go along after you rest, Will. That's a boy. Uh, uh, Chief. Uh, what is it, Commissioner? You got a different idea for the gift? Oh, no, no. I think the tapestry is fine. Only, well, naturally, in my position, I'll be expected to give her a present myself. Something uh, fairly substantial. So I'm afraid I won't be able to contribute to the club kitty. Oh. Well, maybe we can get a tapestry for eight dollars. It don't have to cover the entire wall. Okay, Judge? Yeah. Okay, PB? Yeah. Okay, Floyd? No, it ain't okay. Well, I don't see why we should buy her a present in the first place. Well, why not? Because she done a dirty trick to a fella jolly boy, that's why. Now, Floyd, she can't... Uh, Horace, please. Floyd, I appreciate your sentiment. But as I said before, Leela is a fine girl. I wish her every happiness. Well, that's all well and good, but just the same, no. she's done you a... she's found someone she loves. That's all that really matters. It takes a real man to say a thing like that. <laughs> You're so right, Chief. I mean it, fellas. If Leela can find happiness with this fellow, raise a family, perhaps. I'll not stand in her way. Say, um, what about the card game we were starting here? Let's get going. How about a song? That's a better idea. A song. Okay, come on, guys. Get around the piano. How about this one? Oh, the moonlight's fair tonight along the water. That's good. Okay. From the fields there comes a breath of new moon. Let's have another. No, Floyd. Not that. For heaven's sakes, Floyd. No, Floyd. Go ahead and play that one. I want to sing it. Okay, Commissioner. I wonder who's kissing her now. I wonder who's teaching her now. I wonder. Commissioner, Commissioner, uh, get him a coat, somebody. Hey, get, get him a double coat, Phoebe. Get us all a coat while you're at it. Never should have started that song. I'm sorry, fellas. I didn't mean it. That's perfectly okay, Commissioner. You're among friends. Thanks. And when a fellow gets a blow like you got... She's a fine girl. I wish her every happened. I just... I... Well, I'd just like to say, Commissioner... I know how it is. Oh, no, Chief. You're happily married. Yes, yes, I am. But there was a girl ahead of my wife. I, well, I thought I'd never get over it. Yes, yes. I'd just as leaf you didn't mention it to Hazel. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, you want to play a little cards, Commissioner? I don't know, Floyd. Seeing you feel so... Seeing you feel so lousy, the boys might make a special concession. We'd play bridge just for you. How about it? Thanks, Floyd. I don't think I can keep my mind on it. Just let him sit there and drink his Coke. <laughs> it's a hard, hard world. <laughs> well, are we just going to sit around like this all night? Now, Judge, drink your Coke and be quiet a minute. Feeling a little better, Mr. Gildersleeve? I think the coke is helping. <sighs> I might remind you fellows that Gildersleeve is not the only man around here who 
feels a sentimental pang at Mrs. Ransom's decision? Ah, quit trying to horn in on the sympathy. <laughs> well. Well, let's do something. Yeah, let's. Do what? Yeah, what? I don't know. Boy, this is a dead town. <laughs> hmm. When's Halloween? I don't know. October, November. Boy, we used to have some real fun on Halloween when I was a kid. Kids nowadays don't have the kind of fun we had. Good thing, too. Halloween's a bad night for the police department. <laughs> I remember one trick we used to pull. We'd take and set somebody's garbage pail up on the railing of the porch. Kind of balance it there, see? Then tie a string on it and fasten the string to the doorknob and then ring the doorbell. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Garbage all over the place. <laughs> we didn't do it. The guy done it himself when he opened the door. That keeps it perfectly legal. <laughs> Fellas, let's go out and dump over somebody's garbage pail. Are you joking, Mr. Gildersleeve? No, I'm not. That's just what I feel like doing tonight. Come on, Floyd, are you game? Well, I'm game if the rest are. How about it, Peeve? Come on, it'll take ten years off of you. Well, I'd be willing to watch. Good old Peavy. Whose pail shall we dump over? Well, how about Judge Hooker? Oh, no, he's here. I certainly am. Well, whose will it be? Fellas, how about Mrs. Ransom? Commissioner. Gildy, you really mean it? Certainly, I mean it. After all, look what she did to me. He's himself again. <laughs> And we'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a minute. One of the questions we're asked most often is, when is there going to be more parquet margarine in the food stores? Frankly, we don't know. But our best guess is that the shortage may extend over a period of several months. That doesn't mean, of course, that there'll be any less parquet produced. Kraft's modern margarine plants are continuing to make as much parquet as present supplies permit. And just as quickly as more fine American vegetable oils are made available through government allocation, Kraft will be ready to speed up production. Meanwhile, we're distributing parquet as fairly as we know how, with your food dealer's splendid cooperation. He'll have parquet for you from time to time. So be sure to look first when you shop for delicious, flavor-fresh parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that two more fine programs are joining NBC's great Wednesday night lineup this evening. Immediately following this program over most of these stations, you will hear Duffy's Tavern with Ed Gardner as Archie. Then, of course, Mr. District Attorney as usual, and following that, Frank Morgan as the fabulous Dr. Tweedy. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tatley as Leroy, Lillian Randolph as Burley, and Shirley Mitchell as Leela Ransom. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peter. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> Do the children in your family like fine cheese? Then you can just bet they'll love Pabstet. It's so rich and mellow cheddar cheese flavor, so easy to digest. Pabstet is a cheese food that contains nourishing food values of milk, and it's simply delicious on bread or crackers, or melted into a luscious sauce for hot vegetables, eggs, and macaroni. Why not buy both delicious varieties? Pimento Pabstet in the red package, and golden cheddar Pabstet in the familiar round yellow package. Get Pabstet at your food store tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.